Welcome to My Long Island TV. From Manhasset to Montauk, we've traveled our communities to bring you the following events. I'm your host, Waldo Cabrera. My Long Island TV starts now. There's not one person under the sound of my voice that picked their family or their circumstance. I think what's really important about a summit like this is that it, it really does sort of provide an opportunity to bridge the generational gaps. So today we honored Marge Rogatz, who, as she stated, is 88 years old and has been doing this work for 60 years. The issues may change slightly, but really the need for civil rights and the need to be active in our community remains. An opportunity like this, like this Social Justice Summit, really sort of passes the torch from one generation to the next. And I also love that we have brought together so many fantastic community leaders from all different nonprofits throughout Long Island to really give some very personalized experience to the students of Farmdale State College. You are the people who will create positive changes in our communities, and we hope you will be the ones to inspire and educate action throughout the day. I teach a class called Social Research for Social Justice. As has been said here, it appears that we take two steps forward and one and a half steps back. All of the civil rights that we think we fought for and won are now back to not even having certain voting rights. I had no idea there was an expiration date. I am a child, a child of the 60s. We all believe never trust anyone over 30. I, I want my millennials to know that what you're going through is not new. Every generation had a generation before it that scared the bejesus out of it. I've spent my whole life connecting with young people. Their understanding of social justice is real important, that it starts young and it continues. It's not a job, but it is a calling. So to be able to uh, resonate those themes, uh, to reflect on those themes, to present those ideas uh, within an academic institution, I couldn't pass it by. Hazel had seen a vacancy sign one day at a guarded apartment complex on Edward Street in Roslyn Heights. When she and another African-American woman went to inquire, the rental agent told them no apartment was available. Hazel called me. A few hours later, I went to the complex with another white woman, and we were shown the apartment that Hazel wanted. We could have signed a lease right there and then, but instead, I called Hazel, picked her up, and we went directly to the Mineola office of the State Commission Against Discrimination. It's very hard for people here to talk to each other. We have segregated housing, which leads to segregated schools. Kids don't grow up in the same communities and often don't see each other at all. There are kids in our uh, better off, wealthier communities who don't know black and Hispanic kids. The color only water fountains were little sinks and they were normally, you know, rusted on the inside. And if you drank the water, it was warm. But right next to it, there was this contraption. I found that the water came out continuously and was cool and refreshing. The reason I know, I, every time someone, my parents' head was turned, I drank it. I know what it tasted like. Uh, I think it's very important to talk about racism. A lot of people are afraid to talk about it because it's, supposed, it's, it's something that's uncomfortable. In order for racism to exist, there has to be a, a certain amount of fear based upon things that are not true. If you sit down and talk to people about the thing that bothers you most, then you don't have to fear it anymore because once you lay it out on the table, it's not as scary. It's scary because we shun it most of the time. 